Hi everybody, it's Chip from Chip's Lens. Uh, like I said last week, I'm going to keep these going, so this is video number two, week number two. Um, I apologize in advance if you hear a car door slam behind me. My wife is out there starting her car and running it. It is like bitterly cold here, and we're expecting a couple inches of snow tonight, so we don't want to kill the batteries in our vehicles. Um, like I said last week, I was going to get this week into more of maybe the perils and pitfalls of YouTube. Is YouTube you know, worth it? Uh, the reason I started this channel is because I want to get back into photography. But the job that I have now pays enough to pay the bills. I'm happy with it. But I need to raise money you know, if I want to invest in photography. So I wanted to see if you know this whole YouTube thing is real. If it still can be done. I mean, I, mean, I know it's real. There's people out there that have made millions off of it. Not that I'd ever expect that, but certainly be nice. But... Uh, Right now I'm filming with an old Canon HD camera. Um, I can't even, don't even know the model on it right now. Uh, I'll get back to you on that. I'll have to post it in the notes without moving the camera around. And uh, as far as photography, I got out of the photography in the late 1990s, early 2000s. And the last camera I bought was a Canon 300D. So, I mean, I obviously need, a, obviously need an upgrade. I mean, it's fun to take pictures with, but if you're going to go the pro route and try to make a living out of it, you definitely need something better than a 300D. But, uh, like I said, the perils and pitfalls of YouTube. Here recently, well, well, recently they instituted some new rules, which is going to seriously, I think, seriously hurt new YouTubers or turn people away from the platform. But YouTube's had its problems for the last couple years with their adpocalypse and you know, people doing stupid stuff like Logan Paul brought all that attention to YouTube. And now, it, I mean, he made YouTube look bad. Um, a lot of people gripe about YouTube's ineffectiveness to lay out rules across the board. And if they do lay out rules, nobody knows what's expected of them because they don't enforce them evenly. And they'll never tell you what the rules are. All of a sudden, you just get demonetized. But, uh... So, I mean, I got to thinking about that. You know, I want to make money on YouTube. How do you make money on YouTube? Well, YouTube, I think, is not how you make money. I mean, yeah, you want to get some money from advertising as long as you keep your videos clean. But sometimes that doesn't even help. I have a couple friends of mine that are um, gun bloggers. I mean, I'm big into firearms. And the first thing, every time they post a video it gets demonetized. Even though it's not against the rules, it's YouTube's algorithm that shuts it down. After they dispute it about 24 hours later, they usually re-monetize the video. But that's just stealing right out of their pockets because most videos make all their money within the first 24 hours. That's when they get their most views. So these guys make a video, put it up, it's almost instantly demonetized, then 24 hours later, YouTube goes, oops, we're sorry, it's legitimate, and they've already lost the first 24 hours worth of views. So, I mean, are they doing this to protect their platform, or are they doing this to, to line their pockets? Because YouTube has already stated that they are still in the uh, investment stage. You know, you can read that as, hey, we still haven't made any money. So, I mean, whose fault is that? Don't you know, bash your users for that. I mean, as creators, we need to work together to make money. But YouTube just doesn't seem to care one way or the other. I mean, they're owned by Google. They're owned by one of the biggest companies in the world. I think Google could honestly care less whether YouTube survived or not. But uh, as far as making money on YouTube, you need alternate revenue streams. I haven't made penny one off of YouTube yet. This is my second video and my last video only got two views so you know this is coming from somebody who really doesn't have anything to lose and I really don't expect to gain much but I'm going to try. Hopefully I can put some videos out there and some ideas and some thoughts 
and maybe when I get back into photography, some pictures, stuff that people like to look at regularly, and people like my opinions, my thoughts, my pictures, my videos. Maybe maybe they think I'm funny looking and just want to donate. Hey, that's great. But uh, that's just oh yeah. It, it as the more and more I watch those videos, the more and more I get you know mad that you know YouTube just doesn't want to seem to work with its smaller creators. But you need alternate revenue streams. Last week I didn't put it on the video because it was my first video. I'm not going to go hitting people up for money. But I have set up a Twitter account. I've set up an Instagram account. I've set up a Patreon account. They're all Chips Lens. So it's, you know, patreon.com backslash Chips Lens. It's at Chips Lens for um, Twitter. And it's just Chips Lens for Instagram. I mean, you... I've also got a PayPal. Um, I run a business here. If you can see up behind me, I've got a big vinyl cutter. I cut vinyl decals. Yeah, I hear I have little biohazard symbols people like to put on their uh, lunch boxes. You know, I print little decals like that for people's cars and stuff like that. And I make a few extra bucks off of it, but not a lot. So I've got that. Then I've got Patreon. Hopefully that picks up. And, um,. I don't like the idea of Patreon, or the way Patreon's set up, that if you donate to me, it's like a dollar a month every month, whether you like it or not, whether I post a video or not, so I change the settings in there. The settings on my Patreon are dollar per video, or how much you want to pledge, how much ever the person wants to pledge per video. So if I'm not making videos, I'm not making money. If I make videos, you know, I don't like it the other way around, that if I decide to quit or I just decide I don't want to make a video this week, you still got to pledge your dollar. You know, I'm not out to rip people off. I, I don't like that idea. So, mine is set up that it's pledge per video if you like the videos. Um, Instagram is more for the photography. That way I can, you know, when I do get the equipment that I need, get into it, get onto shoots, I can... Uh, post pictures right to Instagram, get exposure, people can see me, people can say, hey, I like that picture you took, hey, that model you shoot, you're shoot, you shooting was cool, how do I, you know, get together with you to do a project, or how do I get portraits taken by you, and, you know, that's marketing, and in the end, marketing equals money, but, uh, you got people like, um, one of my, couple of my favorite channels, well, it's one person that has three channels, it's, uh, Dr. Ma Matt Carragher. Character. I'm sorry if I say his name wrong, but Demolition Ranch, Off the Ranch, and Vet Ranch. Now he runs, he's a veterinarian by trade, that's what he does for a living. He runs three full-time YouTube channels. He owns his own merchandising business, selling the shirts and hats and beer koozies and whatever, you know, with his logos and stuff on them. And he's expanding that business to sell stuff for other YouTube creators. I mean, the man's smart. He knows how to make money. But I'm not looking to get huge. I mean, I'm already huge if you could see the rest of me, but I just want to essentially change occupations, you know? Um, I've always worked in commercial printing by trade. I work on big printing presses, but the older I get, Unfortunately, I'm diabetic and I have neuropathy in my feet, which sometimes I can't stand on a factory floor all day anymore. That would absolutely kill me. But photography seems like a nice balance of being on my feet, getting exercise, you know, going on shoots, seeing different places, as well as downtime behind a desk doing all the editing, marketing, um, maybe filming the tutorials, doing YouTube. So it's a, it's a good, it's a good balance of up and down. Um, I'd probably never be fortunate enough to get sponsors because I mean, I'm, I, I literally need to make enough money to buy all my equipment. Like I said, this camera is an old camcorder that the battery doesn't work on anymore. So it is permanently on this desk because it has to be plugged into the wall. Uh, my Canon is a 300D, it's an old camera. There's nothing wrong with it. It works. I need some new batteries for it because, unfortunately, lithium-ion batteries don't last forever. But uh, I'd like to have a nice, you know, Sony A7. Was it A7 III? A7 A7R III. 
sitting here in front of me. Well, I'd like to have a Nikon 850D sit. I'd like to have any camera that's, you know, modern, you know, more up-to-date sitting in front of me, preferably one I could film videos with. And you see some of these guys out there, or not guys, guys and gals, that have really done real well for themselves where, you know, Canon will just send them a ca uh, camera and say, here, try this out, keep the body. Or Nikon will send them a body, here, try this out. And, you know, I don't want to start out with a real low-end camera. I'd like to buy a nice, you know, let's just say the first one I said, the Sony AE. I, I always get the, the title mixed up. It's A7R3. Um, I kind of got turned on to that one by watching another YouTuber, Jason Lanier. And if you ever see his photography, it is awesome. I would love just to have the amount of talent that that man has in his pinky finger. But, I mean, you're talking $3,200, give or take, for the body. Um, Sony lenses are extremely expensive. You can use other lenses, but you have to use adapters with them, and I don't know if the quality of the photographs will be as good. So when all said and done, you're holding five, six, seven, easily up to ten grand worth of camera and maybe three, you know, three lenses will hit ten thousand dollar mark. You know, you need, you don't have to have it, but if you want to do the kind of photography that I want to do, you got to have at least one decent light and light stand and modifier to go on that light. Uh, there's nothing cheap about the, you know, the industry that I want to get into, but. Like I said, I can't afford all that, which is the very reason I'm making this video. And I really want to know if somebody can still start a YouTube channel and make enough money to either start into a new industry or make a living off of. Even if I get started in photography, I'm still going to carry on the YouTube. I mean, this may look like a cheesy video now because it's shot on, you know, ancient equipment, but... I really would like to upgrade, proceed, keep talking, maybe find topics you guys find more interesting. If you have topics that you think are more interesting, by all means, contact me. There's a comment on, the, on these, and I read them all. Or at least I try to. Maybe one day this channel will get so big that I get 50,000 comments per video, and I just really can't read them all, but I will do my best. Um... But that's, that's pretty much the gist of what I wanted to say today. I needed to get another video out there. And the perils of YouTube, which is pretty much you can't rely on YouTube. But if you're looking to start a YouTube channel, from my research, from what I've found, people that I've talked to, don't think you're just going to start making videos and start making money. Because chances are you're going to get demonetized, they're going to find a reason, you're going to have to file it, which, oh, by the way, under the new rules, they won't even view your video. You can't even appeal if they demonetize you unless your video has at least, I think, you have to have at least 1,000, 4,000, it's 1,000, 4,000. You've either got to have 1,000 subscribers or 4,000 views on that video, or the other way around, I forgot the numbers before they will even manually view the video and say, oh, there ain't nothing wrong with that video, and put it back up. So now they're just letting the computer lock all the new you know, YouTubers out that whose videos are perfectly acceptable. You know, so... I mean, I'd love to have a business where I could sit back and let the computer do everything. I mean, wow. I mean, how would you like to go to the bank and you don't even see a teller? The computer just says, oh, there's a problem, we can't help you, goodbye which is essentially what YouTube does. How would you like to go to your favorite restaurant and the, the computer says, well, your card was declined or we're out of this food, sorry, have a nice day. You know, that's essentially what YouTube is. You get a form email and that's the end of it. More than likely a human never even sees your complaint. You just get a form email. But uh, I'm not going to knock YouTube too far hard because, I mean, I do have to rely on them. I mean, me and YouTube have to work together, but YouTube really, I think, needs to make a concerted effort to work better with its creators. And if they screw their new creators, people who want to get onto the platform, 
what are they going to do when the older creators decide to give up their channels or retire or just find that they don't like it anymore or for some reason they leave? You need to keep fresh blood coming in. You get tired of watching some people's videos, you want to watch somebody new. So, lesson one, don't rely on YouTube. Lesson two, always have alternate forms of revenue. You know, like I said, with just a YouTube channel, you can tie that to your website, your social media, your PayPal, your uh, Patreon, Twitch. Uh, there's a couple others where people can watch your video. You know, if you're extremely knowledgeable about something, make a how-to video. Make a tutorial. Put a little snippet of it on YouTube, but put the rest of the video on, say, Vimeo, which is a subscription service that you get paid for your videos. You know, I, I don't plan to do that. You know, I like to talk, and if I see, if I learn something, I like to share that. But if it comes to the point where I know how, you know, I, I can make a nice um, how-to or tutorial video, I'll put it right on here. Uh, there's a YouTube channel that I love, which pretty much, do, that's all they do. I don't know if it's all they do, but it seems that way but via their videos, is F-Stoppers. They do a lot of how-to videos, and they put pretty good-sized snippets. You can learn a lot just from their YouTube videos. But they have whole 14-hour DVDs that you go to their website and buy. I was looking at one last night, you know, just about everything you needed to know about photography, copyright, the whole works. And you go to their website, that one DVD is 300 bucks, 299.99. I don't know how many sales they've had, but looking at their videos and the equipment that it's shot with and where they travel to and the you know the cost of the equipment that they're shooting it with, I'd venture to say that they're making some decent coin off, you know, off their sales. That and they do video and photography projects, you know, contract work, you know, being hired by travel companies or different areas or, you know, whatever getting hired by a restaurant to shoot the pictures for their menus. I mean, there's no work that's too low for me to do. I don't care. I'll do it. Um, but uh, you can't get anywhere in life if you don't work. Living off the government and welfare is not an option. That's just not how I was brought up. The only way to succeed in life is try. And if you don't try, you'll fail. So that's my 10 cents for today and my video for today. But uh, hopefully a lot of people start watching this video because I need a new camera. I need a computer that's capable of doing some decent editing. I'm using DaVinci Resolve on my old laptop and it's slow. God, it's slower than dirt. So I need a decent modern computer and possibly a NAS box to store all my videos and pictures in a RAID type system to keep any data from being lost. And I've been looking at, you know, different stuff, but like I said, I can't invest any money into it until I start making money. And the point of me starting YouTube is to try to see if I can start a photography business without pulling money out of my pocket. And I will make videos if money starts rolling in of exactly how much I'm making and what it's going to. Because this is a grand experiment on my part. But once again, I've rambled on long enough. Uh, if you like my video, thumbs up. If you don't, thumbs down. I mean, I can't make everybody like me, but I try. Uh, but uh, I'll put my Patreon links and all that below. There is a, I just thought about it, there's a, uh, another thing that YouTube just started doing. If you ever look at the people's uh, YouTube videos, the little squares that they put up at the very end, they're called end cards. YouTube won't even let you put your Patreon links. They make you bury it in the uh, the description below. So you can't even put those links up on the screen so people can, you know, donate to you anymore. Which, in, in video editing, I'll probably just put a white screen or a credits page at the end of this with the links on it, but you won't be able to click on them. But that's, uh, you know, another thing YouTube is doing, you know. They don't want, they want all the money to go to them, but they're not making money. And all they're doing is ticking their creators off. Because we rely on the money from these videos. Right now, I rely on money from substitute teaching. So, take it for what you will. I've rambled on long enough. I've fragmented my conversation so bad that I'm going to have to edit for the next three hours to put it in some kind of reasonable order. 
But uh, everybody, have a nice day. And please, come back.